Hello everyone and welcome to a game that really needs to be shown but still wasn't shown on this channel while I was having the stream uh, on Friday uh, during the Friday Arena someone asked in the chat have I ever covered uh, Anand versus Laudier and I was like uh, yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure I have but then I checked and it turns out I haven't uh, so that's why I'm showing it now. Now this is a this is a true masterpiece. It's a, one of, uh, I, I think, Anand's definitely one of Anand's greatest games, on par with that uh, uh, Levon Aronian versus Anand in the 2013 Tata Steel uh, Masters, uh, the, the game for the ages. If you haven't seen it, uh, do check it out. I will also put a link to that game in the description below. Uh, first thing you will see. Uh, but uh, it was played in 1997. It was the 30th annual Bill International uh, Chess Festival, and it was a six player uh, double round robin. Featured some of the, the very strong grandmasters like uh, Anand. And Lodier, uh, Anatoly Karpov, Boris Gelfand, uh, and um, well, it's just a, a Scandinavian masterclass. Well, sort of an anti-Scandinavian masterclass. But uh, uh, w without spoiling too much, let's just check it out. It, it's, it's just an amazing game. Uh, so Anand with the white pieces opens with e4, with d5 by Lodier. Uh, it's the Scandinavian defense, of course. E captures, queen captures, and knight to c3. And here. You have some options. You can go back with queen d8, you can go queen to d6, which is now very popular. Uh, queen to a5 or even queen to e6 check uh, if you want to, you know, uh, joke around or if it's a blitz game or not a very important game. But Magnus has been known to play both queen d6 and queen to e6 in some uh, le less important games. But here we have queen to a5, which was the norm in those days. Uh, we have d4 by Anand and now knight to f6. We have knight to f3 and c6. So this is all very standard, making the uh, an escape route for the queen if needed. We have bishop to c4, Anand continues developing, and now bishop to f5. And this is uh, even uh, by today's standards the absolute uh, mainest of the main line. Uh, and here bishop to d2 is uh, the most common move today. But here Anand goes knight to e5, already threatening uh, uh, captures on f7, so black needs to... Uh, defend this either by bishop g6 which is odd because you kind of shift the tension uh, in favor of white white will always be the one who's able to capture so e6 makes more sense which uh, Laudier goes for we have g4 by Anand uh, forcing the bishop to move back bishop to g6 and now h4 with the idea of just h5 and here knight b to d7 stopping h5 as now there's a, a lot of pressure on the knight here if you try h5 here uh, Joel can just capture, capture, and captures with check, and later after white blocks this, you can simply move the bishop, bishop to e4, and black is very happy grabbing that pawn. So instead, after knight bd7, we have knight captures on d7 by Anand. Uh, you could also capture on g6, but uh, again, black would be very happy here. He gets the semi-open file for his rook, he will castle queenside, and not much for, for white has happened here. Uh, so instead, after this knight b to d7, Anand captures on d7. Uh, we have knight captures on d7 and only now h5. We have bishop to e4 attacking the rook and now uh, f3 is a possibility here, castles is a possibility here, but Anand goes for this very nice rook lift. Rook to h3 uh, and now uh, there is actually a pretty big threat here and black needs to be very careful. For example, if you just continue playing like nothing is actually happening, uh, for example, you castle, true, white still cannot capture the bishop because the, the knight is pinned. However, bishop to d2 and all of a sudden, what are you going to do with your bishop? Your bishop is trapped. Uh, you no longer have the escape square uh, d5 because white just captures it uh, because the, the knight will be defended there and you will have opened up uh, an attack towards black's queen. So here you'd have to go bishop g2, rook g3 attack the uh, bishop, uh, bishop to h1 and now rook to g1 and the bishop is trapped. And if black wants to at least somehow uh, not lose any material, he will have to open up his king side b5. You're gonna go bishop b3, b4, attack the knight, and only now uh, will you capture the bishop. Captures, captures, and captures. And we get this position where white is uh, up a pawn, he has the bishop pair, black's position is completely busted, and the white will have, uh, white should be able to win this game. So uh, it's uh, it's a really tough position after this rook to h3 for black, and black really needs to decide how he will tackle this. So first, uh, Lodia goes for bishop to g2. He attacks Anand's rook. We have rook to e3, and only now knight, knight to b6. You could now shift the bishop to d5. It's possible, uh, but he wants to get the knight over to, to d5 to put more pressure on the uh, on the knight and on the rook on e3. So knight to b6, attacking the bishop, bishop d3, and now knight to 
knight to d5 attacking both the knight and the rook uh, and uh, well now there's just a, a double attack on the knight the, the rook is under attack so it's not an easy uh, thing for white to figure out what to play here uh, but uh, you know feel free to pause the video and try to find what Anand played here it's just a wonderful move so you know wh while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, spotting that you can actually trap the dark, the light square bishop. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, Anand played f3 here. And now uh, it's, it looks crazy because the rook is hanging, you can capture the knight, but none of this actually works for black. Uh, because if knight captures rook, and this was played in one game, and uh, white just won a very nice game, uh, bishop captures and now you're still going to lose this uh, bishop just king f2 and there is no way for this bishop to escape you're just going to grab two pieces for the uh, for the rook uh, so even if a line like bishop to a3 is played which is the best uh, for black uh, with the idea that if captures then captures you're just going to play bishop c1 and you will claim your bishop whatever you play bishop h3 king f2 even if you try f5 to open up the position just king g3 captures captures and now the bishop is finally captured you will have to give it up for 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 a pawn and now white will just be very happy he will play bishop g5 bring the rook into the game and even though his king is somewhat opened that uh, doesn't really matter because you're you're, you're up material uh, so this is what happens after this uh, f3 move if uh, joel goes for knight captures here there is also the possibility of capturing the knight on c3 and even this was played twice uh, but in both uh, in both instance, instances, uh, white just won because after captures and captures with check, just bishop d2, the rook is nicely protected, queen captures on d4, and now you play king f2. You don't really mind. Uh, bishop will have to capture. You cannot capture with the queen because of just queen captures rook, but then king captures, and you're again very happy. You have two rooks, you have the bishop pair, and uh, well... Uh, even though black has three pieces for, uh, three pawns for a piece, it, it will not be enough. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it can be played, definitely can be played. So knight captures on c3 is an option, but in practice, uh, black never really got anything from it. So here after f3, we have bishop to b4 by Joel, and it is as of move 15 that this position has never been reached again. So what can Anand do here? Anand just says, okay, I don't mind the triple attack here. I'm just going to continue doing my thing. King f2, I attack the bishop. And here Joel find, uh, found a very interesting line. Bishop captures on c3, b captures, and now uh, not knight captures. If knight captures, queen e1 just wins because the knight cannot move. Bishop d2 is coming and that's just game. So queen captures on c3 and now rook to b1. The rook is under attack, so you have to move it. And now queen captures on d4. And now there is a double attack on the rook. So if you capture the bishop now, you're going to win the rook and the bishop. So uh, very, very nicely played by Joel. Uh, and here the problem is... Uh, you can't really do this. If you go for it, then just captures, captures, and captures. You could go for b7, but black just castles here. And, uh, well, you're up the exchange, and black will have a winning game. So here, after queen captures on d4, we have rook captures on b7 by Anand. And here Anand says, I don't mind if you capture here, because you're not castling. Your king is staying in the center of the board. Point is that if castles just bishop captures on h7, and the queen, the queen is lost after you capture this, queen captures on d4, and white wins. So here, instead, uh, after this rook captures on b7, uh, uh, Loria played uh, rook to d7. Now, after the knight moves, the queen will be defended, and also there's a lot more pressure on white's queen here on the d file. Uh, but here, Anand has uh, such, a, such a brilliancy that, uh, well, I, I must urge you to pause the video and try and find it. Uh, while I again give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. Not only if you spotted the move, but also if you understood why the move is played. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's h6. And h6 is such a such a deep move that, uh, well, once you see it, you, you finally believe it. But, uh, you know, playing, playing it actually in an over-the-board game is just remarkable. Uh, point is, what Anand wants to do here, he wants to open up this diagonal for his light square bishop, because the light square bishop has access to this diagonal, but Anand also needs to make sure he has access to this diagonal, which we're going to show why. So here, 
uh, what can you play here? Well, you could just ignore it and now finally capture the rook because now your queen is defended. There is no tricky business here. For example, bishop captures uh, queen e5, uh, again, keeping an eye on the bishop. So if king captures, you can always capture here. But now comes h captures on g7, rook g8, and queen to c1, defending the bishop. And you're you're going after the light square bishop. This is what this game is about. This entire game is, is about this light square bishop being trapped here. And uh, it's one of, well, the main reason why all the tactics work in Anand's favor. And here the bishop is trapped. You're going to have to go after this. But now Black, uh, white even doesn't have to capture first. He can first just trade down into an end game. Here Anand threatens checkmate. And uh, there's no good way to defend this. You're going to have to trade here. And after captures, captures, you're just going to capture the bishop. And you're going to enjoy this endgame, a uh, winning endgame, where you have two bishops. So a bishop pair for, for black's rook, uh, completely winning for white. So here, after h6, uh, Joel said, all right, I see you're planning some devious stuff here. I'm just going to capture this pawn, and I'm going to play knight captures on e3 next, uh, or depending on what you play. But now comes a move that, uh, well, you had to see if you found h6, but just in case you didn't, for the last time, pause the video and find the move, you know, while, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting, uh, well, definitely one of the one of the greatest moves ever played. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's bishop to g6. That's right. That's that's what it's all about. Bishop to g6 and white wins. And now there are so many, so many threats, so many possibilities here. So firstly, Anand's queen is now uh, hanging. So if Joel wants, Joel, Joel can just uh, pick up Anand's queen. But the problem is after queen captures queen, now not bishop captures here. This looks very interesting, but then the king just moves. And after the bishop uh, delivers check, the knight can block the bishop's check. So there's an even stronger forced mate in four, rook captures on e6 check. And now you don't really have a lot of options. If king f8, now uh, the opening of this diagonal makes sense. And this is why Anand had to play h6. Bishop captures on h6 with check. King g8 and now bishop captures on f7 is checkmate. So this is the, the good stuff. And uh, if rook captures on e7 after this, uh, on e6, uh, uh, Joel just blocks with knight to e7. Doesn't really help. You just capture it here and it's the, the exact same checkmate. Captures king to g8 and bishop captures on f7. A very nice uh, double bishop check, checkmate. So after this bishop to g6, Joel, of course, saw, okay, it's not possible to capture the queen. Let's just uh, play something, but there, there is nothing to play. So here, Joel tried knight to e7. Now, okay, blocking rook captures on e6 because it no longer comes with check. But now Anand finds the, 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 absolute, the absolute simplest way of how to win the game. Now that all of the tactics have worked for him, uh, the game uh, once again turns around uh, to this uh, <laughs> trapped light square bishop here on g2 and Anand plays the absolute simplest queen captures on d4. Rook captures and now combining everything rook to d3 saying well, you, you either capture and my bishop gets out of harm's way uh, or if you move the rook let's say rook c4 then just rook b8 check and everything falls apart because you, you no longer have the option of moving the king so you have to give up the knight uh, after captures, you're going to have to give up the, the rook and everything just falls apart. Rook captures on c2, you're going to block this. And after captures, you're finally going to capture this bishop on g2 and you are up uh, a whole bishop and a rook. So here, after rook to d3, Joel said, all right, uh, well, if I capture, then just bishop capture. So I will not I will not be capturing this bishop either way. So I'm going to play rook to d8. Uh, but now nothing just works because rook captures on d8. We have king captures. And now everything wins here. Bishop captures, wins. Rook checks, wins. Uh, bishop back to d3 wins. And it was in this position that uh, Joel Lottier resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. And once again, we return to the trapped bishop on g2. Uh, who is trapped and there is no way for him to escape. He will have to give up the bishop and after king captures, uh, Anand will just be up a full piece in a, in a completely winning uh, endgame. So yeah, uh, definitely a, a great one. Uh, so thank you for, for recommending uh, uh, that I show it. Uh, th there are, you know, uh, games as epic as this one that I still haven't shown, but, you know, uh, I've only been doing this for a few years. So we're we're going to go through them all at some point. Uh, so yeah, uh, a great game against Joel Odier. Uh, he was born in Canada, but he's a French grandmaster. He was a two times French champion, I think in 2004 and 2006. And all in all, a very strong grandmaster and uh, achieving a game like this against uh, su such strong player. I mean, h6 followed by bishop to g6, an absolute masterpiece. 
and uh, you know again against the Scandinavian so no, no wonder you know Scandinavian never never got its uh, fair share of glory but we are we are still waiting to see the the Scandinavian masterpiece and regarding the standings of the tournament even though Anand uh, lost one uh, game uh, that was a bit of a uh, you know a surprise to Milov uh, he was still able to win the tournament half a point uh, ahead of Anatoly Karpov and clinch first place, uh, first place in this uh, 30th edition of the Beale International Chess Festival. So Anand, Karpov, Gelfand, Lodie, Milov and uh, Pelletier. Uh, so these were the, the final standings. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, if you haven't uh, watched uh, Aronan versus Anand from the 2013 Tata Steel Chess Masters, do check it out. It will be the first link in the description below. Uh, really a mind-blowing game also, so do check it out. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Sandash R, Frank Combs, Gunnar Lipke, Kevin Cole, and David Kimura for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the Morpheus saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Thank you all. Uh, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your Sunday, and I do hope this game improved it at least a little bit. See you soon.